It's your boy Nistro here, and we are back talking to you guys today about Gay Guardian because people in the Gay Guardian Facebook group have been asking for a combo video. And as you can see from my screen here, I have quite a number of replays. So we're going to go through basically a variety of builds for Gay Guardian and the potential first turn and second turn boards you can establish with Gay Guardian. To start off, very simple the Keeper of Dragon Magic combo. So if you draw a name, uh, if, if you brick with a name, Keeper of Dragon Magic can unbrick your hand, but it can discard the name to search fusion deployment and you can activate fusion deployment to act to summon one of the names from deck. Keeper of Dragon Magic, his second effect is that you can reveal a fusion from your extra deck and then special summon a monster from your graveyard and face on defense, which that is one of the fusion materials. Keeper of Dragon Magic, if you draw him with a brick, he is a one card unbricker, if that makes sense. Like he is a one card fusion play if you draw him with a brick. So we just made wind and water there, which is why I love Keeper of Dragon Magic in this deck. Next off, tank and tank and field spell. I mean, you, you can't really go wrong with this. You activate field spell first, right? It's always correct to activate field spell first because tank will always be able to destroy something at the end of its effect in case they are able to summon anything. You want to have wall shadow up when you resolve tank so that it can potentially destroy a monster your opponent controls. If you're going second, Obviously, tank is going to be an amazing card because it allows you to destroy cards your opponent controls. You get to go into your wind and water by banishing your face of materials. The sky is blue. Next off, we have souls and two gate guardian spells and traps. Uh, I basically wanted to show you guys the potential of this. So souls is great because you get to mill your Kazijin. And then um, one cool thing here, uh, one one cool interaction is that when you send spells and traps to the grave with souls, Prey of the Jirai Gumo is a speed spell too that can activate the same turn that is sent to grave. So you can chain Jirai Gumo to souls to search one of the names before you get your draws so that you guarantee, right? Like you have one name in grave, one name that you're gonna search and you can search the third name by banishing Wind and Thunder after drawing your two cards. You basically get four cards out of Magician Souls and discarding two Gate Guardian spells and traps. You put Illusion back and you know, the great thing is that even if you run out of Kazijin, you still get to just start milling Illusion at that point, which is amazing. So we search Sangha here. We draw two and we drew into the Suijin anyway. Um, I, I had it at, you know, um, don't shuffle deck. So uh, the bricks were on top of the deck. But imagine these were like any other two cards in our deck. Unironically, I bricked worse than this with uh, Gate Guardian. So this isn't even a <laughs> completely terrible hand. And so, yeah, we basically get to make a mind and we get to turn Magician Souls into a Link Karibo. I like Link Karibo here. Obviously, if you're going second uh, and you play a Kaiju or something, you can make Relinquished Anima, but Link Karibo is the uh, best Link one to go into here. So now we have Souls plus Field Spell. And so this is a more of a desperate situation, right? If you have no other spells and traps to send, like if you only draw monsters, plus let's say a Shadow Ghoul or just Field Spell itself, you can use Field Spell to send both it and the monster you place down on board to draw two more cards. Now, I ended up drawing Bricks, but we did end up having Kazijin and Suijin in the graveyard there. So if we had a way to get into Sangha, if we drew another way into Field Spell, we could have done something there. And now we're going to get into the e Telly plays. And this one is the Punk combo. This is just straight up the how to play punk with gate guardian and the reason why this one's important is because this is a combo that guarantees that you get to field spell at the end of the combo and you don't even have to use your normal summon so you e telly you get to ziamin and ziamin's going basically punk carries the deck now i don't think this is the most optimal combo because you have to and i i mean you literally have to go into rising carp so that you can get wag on and then Wagon can search Field Spell. You need to have Field Spell at this point. Now, it should be stated that if you already have Field Spell, then you don't need to go through Wagon. You, you do still need to go into Rising Carp and have a way to do all this stuff. But if you, as long as you can make an Ultimaya, which is what we're going for here, we turned Rising Carp into Wagon plus Deer Note, and then those two went together to make Magma, and then Deer Note sent to Grave, revive Foxy Tune. I'm sure you've all seen this before if you played Punk, and then we make Ultimaya, we set Field Spell, and that allows us to summon Ancient Fairy, Ancient Fairy, and destroy Field Spell to uh, search wall shadow 
And again, we have not used our normal summon yet. So we get to wall shadow, place a name down, normal summon tank, place another name down. We can make cross sheep here because uh, we really don't need Ultimai anymore and tank has already fulfilled its purpose. You could also make rank seven if that's something that you'd, you'd wanna do. And then uh, you can banish your materials to make wind and water here and you can revive one of your tuners from graveyard uh, thanks to cross sheep after summoning your fusion and you get to go into Baron. So you just made three negates out of three cards in hand. Sounds like a pretty good deal, you know? <laughs> and yeah, that's why the punk combo is something that you may want to consider. At the same time, it's like punk is kind of expensive and you your whole deck needs to be dedicated or like a whole chunk of your uh, deck space needs to be dedicated to the punk engine and to resolving rising cart. So whether that's worth it or not to you is really at your discretion, but you have triple E Telly, triple Foxy Tune. As long as you can make Ultimaya without normal summon, you should be good. So now we're gonna have two replays in one, right? And the, the reason why we're gonna have two in one is because now, again, we're going into a variety of builds. We're looking at Kashtira now. So I'm gonna show you the first turn and the second turn variants of what you can do with Kashtira. Now, I know these are three card combos, which you know, again, sounds really, really minus, but this is something that puts the Kashtira style of Gate Guardian above the rest of the uh, archetypes. And it's just the versatility with Unicorn being able to search birth. And then you can go to D uh, Diablosis, you know, make your wind and water so you, so you can stop imperms or whatever. And then go Diablosis, banish one from their extra deck, banish one from, from the top of their deck. And then you can use birth here to revive Unicorn so that during during your opponent's turn, they activate any monster effect, you start to banish more cards out of their extra deck. So now you've banished two monsters out of their extra deck, right? And being a gate guardian player, I think this is really essential because there are going to be some cards that just completely destroy some of your gate guardian monsters. Like for example, Time Thief Redoer, you know, like Boxia, if you're playing against Sword Soul. Actually, I haven't uploaded my Sword Soul replay yet because I've been, uh, there's been so much content from the YCS that I haven't had the time, but problematic monsters that like get in the way of your gate guardians, you can start to banish them with Unicorn and with Mind Hacker and having Burf on field is a really good thing, right? So now it's like the, the second turn variant, right? You can go into Unicorn, uh, search, search Burf, field spell. You can tank, place a name down, and here's one of the benefits of this going second, which this is a, more, a lot more likely to draw going second because three cards going second is actually not that bad compared to having to open these three cards going first. We heavy tank effect to put down a name and then a heavy tank at the end of its effect destroys a monster without targeting. And we do pop the unicorn here because, you know, obviously if we are going second, we want to get rid of the problematic monsters. If they looked at our extra deck, they might have banished something that was very significant. Like um, they already got the e Telly and the Baron out of our deck, but what else could we possibly have that could uh, be very effective going second? Well, we have Big Eye. Now, uh, this this was a bit of a misplay here because you definitely want to. Now, if you see they don't have any back row and, you know, then you can go into Big Eye or whatever. But we could have made our own Wind and Water before going into Big Eye so that we could make sure we have that little bit of protection. Or even we could have made Gate Guardians combined in, in case they had Valor or something. We could have stopped them from basically negating our Big Eye before going into it because we had Sangha in hand and we had two ways into names with Field Spell and Labyrinth Tank. So now we're gonna Field Spell here and this time, yeah, we're gonna go, we go into Combined a little too late, but we still do get the Burp and, you know, we have Combined, we have Unicorn, Banish One, uh, you know. And th this is just this first turn and the second turn variant of this three card opening. This isn't as much of a duel as it is just me showcasing what you can do on each side, whether you go first or go second with those three cards. Next, we have Unicorn plus a Brick plus e Telly. When you draw a tank, you're not really worried about Unicorn resolving, right? Because tank can just normal summon itself. So if they ash your Unicorn, you don't really care. But if they ash your Unicorn here, it's a big deal because you need Kashtira Birth to normal summon your uh, three elements without tributing, 
right? That's the very first sentence of cast your rebirth. You can summon out level sevens without tributing, which is amazing. Now we get to turn these two into Diablosis again. This is the best rank seven going first. There is, there, there really isn't a lot of good rank sevens going first. There aren't a lot that say quick effect or negate, like maybe flare metal, but that is really, really situational. And like flare metal is only good when you have multiple, right? Because the whole point of flare metal is that you're threatening them for game if they keep activating too many effects. But that's <laughs> that's not going to be the case when you're playing Gate Guardian, you know, like you can't really threaten your opponent. You sort of have to trick them into playing into your cards, right? And yeah, so we Diablosis, we get to banish uh, one from X deck, one from top of deck, right? We're, we're not going to save the second effect for potentially reviving Unicorn because it's just it's just correct to always just banish one from the top of deck, right? So now we get Birth to bring back Unicorn and then we get e Telly for our Madame Spider. And now you're thinking, wait, Nistro, how are you fitting Punk, Castira, and Gate Guardian into the same deck? The answer to that is, is that this is actually a different build from the Punk build. This is a Castira focused build with just two to three e Telly, Madame Spider, Ghost Ogre, and the searchable trap card. That is a monster in the gate. Now, simply off of um, bricking with Unicorn and Sangha, we still have two negates. We have one negate with Baron, we have one negate with Gabu, we have follow up with Birth, and we also have follow up with uh, Baron revival effect. So it's not the worst situation to be in, right? That's why even bricking in the Kashira build really isn't that bad of a situation. Even if it was just like Diablosis plus Unicorn, it still wouldn't be that bad of a hand. Now we are going into tank plus e Telly, which is a little better than, than our previous hand. So um, we field spell, place, place our elements down, um, and then basically we get to make Baron with an extra negate on board because we are e Tellying into the Madam Spider, right? So we e Telly into Madam Spider, search our monster negate, and now we have a four negate board off of three cards. So tank with field spell is, tank with e Telly is probably the best way to go about it. Personally, if you could keep your tank on field, I would say you should do that. But um, because you have Baron, right? After their turn, if Baron survives, you can send Baron to grave, summon back tank next turn so that you have a follow up to get two names on board, right? Like, because you really don't need Baron anymore after it uses its negate. It can pop cards, but so can heavy tank. This is uh, a, a really a, amazing setup going first and even going second. Um, j just pretend we didn't draw this, this unicorn, right? So even even going second, you can go Madam Spider or you, or you can go Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre is is in this particular list. Wall Shadow for our tank, right? And we, we're just pretending that um, this isn't a, a field of four negates. Again, this isn't like an actual duel. This is just show, showcasing the differences between your board going first and your board going second, right? So going second, you can tank, right? And then uh, tank can destroy a monster your opponent controls and then because there are already cards on the field, you can go into something like Chengying. And this is where the more budget version of the build comes in because Unicorn is a kind of budget card, right? If you're gonna play Fenrir, right? If you're gonna play Cashier or Fenrir, then I understand, right? It's no longer a budget deck, like $30 for a card, ridiculous. But the <clears throat> same thing for Baron, right? The cheapest Baron is like 40 something right now. So it's not really a budget deck anymore if you're paying $40 for a single card. But Chang'ing isn't expensive. It's a level 10 synchro as well. And when you banish, and when and when a card is banished, you get to banish both one card from your opponent's graveyard and their field without targeting. By summoning Chang'ing, you know, we get to uh, activate its effect when we fusion, when we contact fuse, and we get to banish one from field and one from grave. Now, obviously that does trigger wind and water, but it also doesn't help that, or it also helps that Chang'ing also has this like permanent attack manipulation effect where he gains 100 attack defense for every banished card and your opponent loses 100, uh, every monster your opponent controls loses 100 attack and defense for every banished card, which will definitely help you push for game when you're banishing two, three cards at a time to make your contact fusions, that's still going to make a 400 attack point deficit between your monster and your opponent's monsters. 
right? And once you start to banish by his effect, you know, it's going to be even more. So it's it's just an amazing sort of like power play card. Um, it, it, it's it's great removal. And as long as you open tank plus away into uh, your level threes, or if you open even a Kashtira going second, this is a great card to consider, especially because Baron only pops one, right? Like this, this banishes from field and grave, and he also protects himself from being destroyed by card effects by banishing one. So what you can do is the Gate Guardian quick play spell destroys any card on field. And if you really wanted to, you can target your own Chinging, protect it from destruction, and then banish a card to your opponent controls, right? So that's why I advocate for Chang'ing when playing Gate Guardian. And I believe we should see Fenrir here, right? So Fenrir is slightly different than Tank, or slightly different than opening Unicorn, right? Because Fenrir doesn't really uh, get you follow-up. Like, it doesn't get you instant follow-up, right? Like, Unicorn is just, you're making Diablosis if you draw a Unicorn, because you can just birth bring back the unicorn. But in this case, you can't, you don't have birth. So what you're doing is that you're actually just ending on unicorn plus wind and water. Why? Because Fenrir is still a scary card by itself. This is Cyber Dragon Super Saiyan 3. Cause like Alpha the Master of Beast is like Cyber Dragon Super Saiyan 1. Pankatrops is like Super Saiyan 2. Fenrir is Super Saiyan 3, right? Like that. that's that's sort of like the tier and power levels. He does search Unicorn so that if your board does get broken down, you do have something to play next turn. But you can survive just off of two spell and trap negates and one monster removal on your opponent's turn. Even if they do remove wind and water from field, or even if they clear your whole board, you can search birth next turn and just bring back Fenrir. It, it is actually kind of goaded when you draw Fenrir. I think Fenrir is like one of the best openings that this deck can have. And I know at this point it's four cards, so it's a little copium, but you mix this with an E-Telly and you're golden. As a matter of fact, this is why I like um, Kashjira so much is because if you drew fusion deployment here, you'd still be in a good situation. If you drew fusion deployment instead of like tank or instead of field spell, you'd still be in a good situation because it's okay for you to leave your monsters just on the board, kind of just vibing. This is my personal favorite combo. This is my personal favorite combo with Gate Guardian. It is the field spell plus Armageddon Knight. And so you normal Armageddon Knight, you get to mill Zephyros. Zephyros gets to return back the wall shadow from field to hand. So activate wall shadows effect first before you normal summon Armageddon. You get to bring out Zephyros, you take 400. Activate Wall Shadow again, you place the second name down. Boom, you get to use these two to go into Cross Sheep, and then you get to banish these two to summon out your fusion. And because the fusion was special summoned to a zone of points too, it gets to revive a level four lower monster from your graveyard. Summoning back Armageddon Knight. Armageddon Knight is not once per turn, so we get to mill Destrudo. Destrudo, pay half your life points. Go into Appalooza. Now, three negate Appalooza plus wind and water, cool but we had a level three tuner and a level four monster on field plus field spell. I wonder what we could potentially do with that. Hmm. So let's let's make some more uh, variations of this combo, right? Armageddon Knight plus field spell. Now we're placing Sangha down first, and there's a good reason for that. This is going to be the ancient fairy route. Now, I will say that the ancient fairy route does sort of beat around the bush more, but it does also play around Nib better than the than the first route. So it's really up to you how you want to sequence it. But this is definitely a, a better route going second. So we get to go cross sheep again, and this time we're making our Wind and Thunder. Bring back Armageddon Knight, Armageddon Knight, Mill, Destrudo, Destrudo, pay half. Um, oh, did not mean to swap there. Um, you sync up into Ancient Fairy and you get to pop your field spell to search pseudo space. After you search your pseudo space, you can use Thunder and Wind to just search another wall shadow, meaning you have access to another fusion. And the reason why pseudo space is so great is because you get to banish your field spell and then it becomes the field spell for a turn. And because the field spell is not once per turn, you just get to keep doing it. You just get to keep placing your Cosigen, Suigen, or whatever from your hand deck or banish zone, you know? So pseudo space first, right? Because we want to put the fake one first because you want to have the real one on field during your opponent's turn so that they are uh, limited by its effect as well. And you get to banish your wall shadow, place a name down, regular wall shadow, place another name down, banish to go into wind and water, 
and now you have two negates on board and you are also at lower life points than your opponent because you've paid 400 then you paid half your life points and even even gaining the 1000 from ancient fairy still doesn't put you at a huge advantage when it comes to um life points so if you're going second and you don't want to search field spell because you already have a way into that last name this is uh you could go for ryoka guardian here and now like you just have to consider this is all off of two cards armageddon knight is that strong in this deck like zephyros is probably one of the best um cards you can mill in gate guardian because the field spell just loves being reactivated right so now we uh we're gonna see a going second variant and I did goof up a bit on this, right? Um, and I will tell you why. So, Kaze Jin here, he allows you to, oh no, well, we're, we're, actually we're, we're gonna do this like normal, right? So we're gonna do the exact same thing, cross sheep again, activate field spell again, field spell effect, place name down, thunder and wind, bring back Armageddon Knight, mill Destrudo, pay half your life points, right? And now, we are going to, we could just, again, we could just go for Ryoku Guardian at this point and we would just win, right? Like that would, that would <laughs> kind of just, that would kind of just, you know, be the perfect way to win it. You could go for Ryoku Guardian here if you play it, but there is another route for going for game and uh, you, you're going to see what it is right here. With these three monsters, you could just instantly go into Boro Sword, but there is one big problem on the field, and that is the field spell. Boro Sword would be an OTK here, because you send these three to Grave, it gets to attack one, um, you know, your Gate Guardian gets to attack one, and then Boro Sword gets to attack again by switching your Gate Guardian to defense. The issue is that monsters can't attack the turn they're summoned unless they're level five or higher. So you need to be able to get rid of Field Spell to go into Boros or Dragon. I did end up searching a double attack Wind and Thunder here because if your opponent has Field Spell or if you have Field Spell, you can Copium and pop your own Field Spell to go for game. So yeah, we can go Ancient Fairy here, pop our own uh, Field Spell, go into Pseudo Space, and then we can double attack Wind and Thunder. Um... Oh, I probably sequenced that wrong. But you know what? Yeah, you, you could you could just go Ancient Fairy. Um, but assuming that you're not playing the mirror match, right? You don't have to go Ancient Fairy. You can double you can double attack Wind and Thunder, pop your own field spell, and then um, Thunder and Wind plus Boar Sword is more than enough to go for game. Yeah. So I, I did kind of mess mess this up a bit, but that's sort of the the the, the theory. Uh, behind the Armageddon Knight going first or second. It's a really great card to open in Gate Guardian. Uh, unfortunately, it's limited. You can play Rota, but two out of 40, even if you're playing the lowest card count possible, is still not very likely. That's still only two out of 10 hands. Are you actually gonna see Armageddon Knight? But there is actually a more consistent way to see Zephyros for uh, going first or second. And we're gonna get into that a little later, but I wanted to show you guys one more combo. If you mix Armageddon Knight with the Punk build, this is what you can get. So this is a, this is like a test hand scenario, and we drew Armageddon Knight, we drew multiple ways into field spell, we drew Shira, Sh Shirakusai. So I'm just gonna let this play out. You guys already know what's going on by this point. Um, cross Sheep plus Wind and Water, bring back the Armageddon Knight, go into Ancient Fairy, And we get our second field spell, we go Ancient Fairy, we pop Wall Shadow, get the Pseudo Space, Pseudo Space Activate, get our, get another name on board, Wall Shadow, put down, get Thunder and Wind to search a, search a Interruption. Oh yeah, this, this, this replay, you can tell how early this replay was because the they they haven't updated the, the, the card artwork. It still has like the super rare foiling from when these cards were first revealed so that's how long ago i was like fucking with this stuff but yeah so we get to search we get to use, go into thunder and wind we get to search an interruption and then because we drew a level three tuner with this hand 
Ancient Fairy can summon a level four lower monster from our hand for free once per turn, meaning three plus seven equals Baron. Now we have one two negates, uh, two negates off wind and water, one negate off Fleur, and one interruption off wind and thunder, just a generic destroy one card on field. And yeah, four interruptions off of Armageddon Knight. Uh, and we still have a uh, field spell on board and we still have follow up with uh, Shadow Ghoul. And because Destrudo goes back into deck when you um, when you use it uh, after using its effect, when it leaves field after using its effect, if you bring back Armageddon Knight next turn using Baron's effect, you can mill Destrudo again and just pay half your life points again to summon it back and then go into something like Borosword. The, the world is your fucking oyster if you open that Armageddon Knight going first. <laughs> or even second, before we go into this final build, is that the reason why we have to play Armageddon Knight to get Zephyros and we can't play something like uh, Mathematician is because Mathematician will, is only on normal summon, basically. You could go into Cross Sheep and get your, you know, get your fusion out and then revive Mathematician or Zephyros. It's way more of you will not have any follow up kind of situation. And he also can't mill Destrudo. So you'd have to, you basically wouldn't be able to, to do much more with Mathematician. Like even if you were able to bring it back, you would not be able to extend past Cross Sheep plus Mathematician. So you'd need another Link 2 or Link 3 Rather than Appalooza or something like Ancient Fairy Dragon, you're gonna to need to figure out a route that says Link 2 or Link 3 that you can make using Mathematician and Cross Sheep to really be successful with that. Maybe Zephyros would be better, not sure. But yeah, that's why it's, it's kind of tough that we can't use Mathematician. So now you guys saw Branded Fusion and we are going to show you the Branded Fusion route. So this is really a two card combo, like a two and a half card combo. We have the Brick in Hand to discard for our fusion effect. And you will see what I mean in a second. So we start with activating wall shadow and placing a name down. Then we go branded fusion, which, you know, if they have the ash, they have the ash, kind of tough. We mill Albaz and Zephyros. That's why I said earlier that there is a more consistent way to mill your Zephyros. And you get to summon Lubelion and Lubelion on, on summon gets to discard a card and to um, fusion summon a lovely or lower mo uh, fusion monster from your deck using materials for, that are either banished, field, or grave, right? It really sucks that like your gate guardian fusions can't be fusion summoned normally because they they would have so much synergy with like branded if they could, and, but they're also all level nine and higher. So it's not even like it would be amazing synergy, but like just even like the fusion summon thing by itself would have been amazing. Right, so we activate Lubellion here, we we discard our brick and we get to shuffle back Albaz and our Lubellion to make Mirror Jade. Um, Zephyros, uh, bring back Field Spell, put two names down, and now we are at a situation where we have Wind and Water and we have Mirror Jade. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you this is because uh, Mirror Jade's amazing, right? Everyone knows Mirror Jade is an amazing card. And Branded, this actually fulfills a role that Branded does not have normally, and that is Spell and Trap Negates. Like, there is not a card in Branded Engine that just says straight up negate. There are, like, you can sort of beat around the bush with it. Maybe there's like Dramaturge or things like that, but there, there, are, not a, there are not a lot of cards in Branded's engine that just straight up say you can negate something. That's the role that Gate Guardian can fill and branded. And again, we're going through a variety of builds. I'm showing you guys just about everything that I know. And it's it's really funny because like the day before I recorded this, I, I like I was recording every single replay. And then I just saw like Naturia, someone used Naturia with fucking Gate Guardian. And I'm like, man, like what the fuck? <laughs> and I know there's an Eldritch build as well, but I don't think there's like Eldritch combos. It's like, if you know how to play Eldritch and you know how to play Gate Guardian, I'm sure you'd be successful with Eldritch Gate Guardian, right? Gate Guardian can play Floodgates and you just Eldritch send, you know, you can Eldritch send your um, materials that you place down with Wall Shadow because they're counted as, con as continuous spells on, on, on field. So you can Eldritch send them to use its effects basically. So it gives you more of an engine to keep on reviving your Golden Lords, right? If you want to be degenerate and play Eldritch with Gate Guardian. You can. And you also get two spell and trap negates. 
uh, every once in a while. So yeah, against Eldritch, that, that's that's kind of kind of busted. So yeah, um, continuing talking about Branded, just fulfilled a role that Branded can't do normally, right? They We made a card that says negate on it. And now going second, if you wanted to potentially, you know, again, we can start to negate things. And if you wanted to banish a card your opponent controls, so most people would send Albion, right? And I'll, I'll give you a bit of an alternative that I think is better, specifically for Gate Guardian. And we want to send Alba Lenatus, the Abyss Dragon. Most people like to send Albion because Albion sets a branded spell and trap from deck at the end of the turn that is sent. But Alba Lenatus, he gets to either add a Palmerization or Fusion normal spell from your deck to your hand. Now, we're playing two different fusion spells in our deck. We're playing Branded Fusion, Branded Fusion is one, and Fusion Deployment is the other. Meaning that by milling the Albalinatus, we get to choose between either adding Branded Fu another copy of Branded Fusion to make another Mirror Jade or another big fusion next turn, or we get to choose between Fusion Deployment to uh, continue extending into our Gate Guardian combos. So it's a really good balance between which card you want to have as follow-up. That's not something that Albion lets you choose when you send Albion. So I think Albalinatus is the preferred fusion to send. Because if you send Albion, we don't play any other branded spells and traps other than branded fusion. We could play maybe one of the branded traps or something. The one that like, okay, if your opponent controls a monster with a higher attack than a fusion, like and you control wind or water or something, then maybe that's not something that we're gonna get to resolve consistently. Compared to Albalinatus over here, we're always gonna need either Branded Fusion or Fusion Deployment when we're playing a Branded Gate Guardian deck. I kind of glossed over what, what my uh, opponent did here, right? So we banished, so he went into battle phase. Mirror Jade doesn't target. So we were able to just get rid of Combine straight up and they were able to summon Water and Thunder off of Combine's effect. And so Water and Thunder is a great way to clear boards. And I also want to just show this fusion at least once before this combo video ended because there's there's almost like nothing with him. There's almost no tech with this single card other than you summon it once combined is destroyed to survive. <laughs> this is more of a defensive kind of card than, than anything else. Maybe if you want to break down a board and you had multiple starters, but Ryoku Guardian just solves that issue for you a lot easier. They make Water and Thunder and then they make Mary Jade's attack zero and then they attack into it. But you know, Mirror Jade's effect when it's destroyed, end phase, my my opponent gets fucking Raigekied, you know? End phase, we, I decided to search Brand Diffusion, but I could have also gotten Fusion Deployment, and my opponent gets Raigekied. I see this as an absolute win. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with this. I believe that's all for this replay, right? He, he gets to bring back his song or whatever, but yeah. Um, we, we could have normal summoned uh, fucking Albaz, made, made fucking Albion here. And you could actually make Albion with Branded Fusion by milling Sangha as well. So if you need to get Sangha out of deck and you don't mind making Albion, you know, you can make Albion turn into Lubelion, Lubelion turn into to Marriage. The world is really your fucking oyster, you know, when it comes to Gate Guardian Branded. I think it is really strong. I don't think it's as strong as regular Branded just because regular Branded just has so much recursion and a lot more power plays that can stun the opponent. But I think if Branded ever, like if some of their main key cards ever get hit, I think this could be a good alternative for both Gate Guardian and for Branded to consider. Okay, that was 13. I think that means we only have one or two more. Oh, okay, yes. This is what I like to call the Kevin P special. If you don't know who Kevin P is, he is the guy who piloted Gate Guardian in the YCS London feature match, right? And this is what he advocates for when he is building his deck. We actually are gonna have a deck profile for this particular deck coming up real soon. I actually already recorded it. I just need to edit it so I can get you, get it out to you guys. But essentially, Burial from a Different Dimension. Kevin claims it to be the best extender for Gate Guardian, and I'm going to show you guys exactly why he believes that. I don't entirely agree, but I understand where he's coming from. Basically, if you go into Thunder and Wind with like, basically, if you have a way into a fusion, you go into Thunder and Wind and you search another copy of Field Spell. And now you, you activate Field Spell, you, you put one name down, you Burial for the previous two names that you banished, and now you get to make it combined, right? So going first, it's like, okay, 
you get to make it combined, right? So um, let's say that we drew the Suijin or let's say that, that, that we drew Sangha in hand and we made water, water and wind instead of thunder and wind. And so that means we would have two negates plus um, combined negates, right? Which aren't really, aren't really negates, they're more like interruptions, but you know, same difference, right? Burial allowed us to extend into a combined. It is, if you ever see this card, just know that it is gate guarding combined turbo. Now let's take that to the next level. And so you draw two, com <laughs> two burials, right? So uh, same idea, we go into our, Wind and Thunder, and then um, Tank is allowed to destroy something, right? Because Tank is goaded. Um, go into our, our, our Thunder and Wind. And we get to, this time, we're going to search something that destroys, right? Because the reason why we search Field Spell going first is because we need to get that third name. But we can get that third name off of Double Attack Wind and Thunder going second. When going second, we can clear we can clear a monster because we're going into combined rather than going into one of the smaller fusions. It doesn't matter where we get the name at. It doesn't matter if it's on hand, on field, in grave. It doesn't matter where it is. As long as we have access to it, it's fine, right? So we were able to pop one off tank, pop one, one off wind and thunder, right? Whatever, he activates his effect. We thunder and wind, search the third name, we burial for the first one, right? And we, we we did put one of their names back because we can, right? Fuck it, right? There's there, there isn't enough ban we don't have enough banished monsters on our side, so we can just start touching our opponent's side, right? Like if you want to play play around like Castira or something, you know, you can kind of do that to be funny, like a Rise Heart or something. Anyway, um Then we banish all three to make combined. And we still have another burial in our hand, so you know what that means. Put all three back. Uh, don't, don't. I, I, I was, I was just having fun here with the chain links here. We put all three back in grave, and we get to make another one. Look at that. We just made double gate gardeners combined. Going second. So, basically, with this combo, we got to clear two cards. We made double gate gardeners combined, and we have amazing follow up. Uh, assuming they they attempt to get rid of our combines and we because this is a going second hand we would have two more cards in hand to potentially um, clear the board right like dark ruler evenly um, because you definitely don't need your battle phase in this deck unless you're trying to go for a Ryoku guardian otherwise you nine times out of ten you don't need your, your your battle phase in this deck to establish a board right so yeah that's the Kevin P special and yeah even though um even though the Kazujin and Sangha do target they target during damage calculation meaning unless you you're either speed spell three or you change attack defense then you would not be able to activate oh no you have to negate activation and combine negates effect right 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 so yeah, he's unable to activate during damage step. And yeah, that's that's real. I, I just wanted to have fun uh, attacking and you know doing all that, but that that wasn't necessary. That, that was just me being extra. Yeah, here we go. Instant win, right? Now I don't like a hero lives going first, right? I, I've I've told you guys this before because you have to pay half your life points, and yeah. You know, you get to search Ryoku Guardian and do all that, right? So that's basically the instant win combo. If you're going second and your opponent does not have a way to interrupt your board, um, once you are able to make Thunder and Wind and go for and go for Ryoku Guardian, you basically win the game. That's that's like the best value a hero lives has in Gate Guardian, in my personal opinion. I think Prisma's cool, but I just think like this a hero lives just conflicts with the Castira way too much, in my opinion. So like, if you're playing the Castira build, you'd, you'd rather just draw a Prisma than a Hero Lives because now if you're, now you have to choose between your Unicorn or Fenrir or Prisma versus Castira, Normal Summon Prisma, right? Like w which one sounds better, right? And then Prisma can, can sort of be like a substitute Normal Summon for Tank. It can do the same thing without destroying a monster on board or being able to 
go into rank sevens, but still, that's not the worst situation ever. A hero lives, I just, I, I really like the card in general, but only going second. Going first, you're just sacrificing way too much to get way too little. Like, if you were playing a build where you had to have a certain number of starters, right? Because every combo in Gate Guardian requires at least two cards. There is no one card combo yet. From what we know, there is no one card combo yet. So the, the fact that it's not even doing everything by itself for paying half my life points and also conflicting with the Cash Deeras, which is, a, in my opinion, the best starters for Gate Guardian, kind of fallen in priority for me. If you can't get your hands on Prismas, I wouldn't stress it too much if you can't play, uh, if you wanna play this deck. Keeper of Dragon Magic does very, does very close to the same thing and is way more affordable and accessible, you know, helps your game plan a lot better too because Keeper of Dragon Magic can actually keep reviving them from Grave every turn. So if they happen to be sent to Grave after like your fusions are broken down or something and your opponent, you know, breaks down your board, you get another Keeper of Dragon Magic, you, you can still revive them from Grave. If you're playing Gate Guardian on a budget, I think a Hero Lives is not 100% necessary. You can play a deck focused around more level sevens and Sacred Swords of the Seven Stars and get something going on there. But yeah, that's been just about every Gate Guardian combo that I could think of and I know but there's more. I know there's way more out there that I have not covered yet. These are the ones I think are somewhat practical. I think that you should know if you are going to attempt to play Gate Guardian there. I, I know that I've you know bounced between the walls with certain builds. So if you wanna see a particular build of Gate Guardian, uh, let me know in the comment section below and I will try to get, to get that to you guys. But otherwise, that has been all from me. Hope you guys enjoyed. This has been your boy Nistro here, signing out.